Hi, I just bought another 30 watt desoldering iron on AliExpress, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how well it works. I will leave a link in the video description below in case you are interested. If you recall, I reviewed the cheap desoldering iron I bought on AliExpress not too long ago. And just to remind you, this one was actually the one I reviewed. At the time, it was actually probably the cheapest one I could find. I have used it for quite a few times now. It actually worked fine. There are a couple of shortcomings of this particular desoldering iron, and I mentioned in my previous video as well. But let me just summarize them here. The first problem, unfortunately, that's the main issue in my opinion, is that the design is pretty poor, and I knew that when I bought it, as I could see it. But you can see here, the wiring actually comes out from the middle, and it just gets in your way every single time you're trying to use the iron. Clearly, there was no design whatsoever. Basically, the whole thing was just cobbled together here. The second issue, as many people had pointed out, is that there's no tool included for cleaning the nozzle. Now, to be very honest, I haven't had the need to clean it just yet, as when the soldering iron is hot, you could just pump the iron a few times, and that will clear it out. So no issues. But besides these obvious issues, the desoldering iron actually does its job, and worked more or less as I expected. Anyway, later I found this desoldering iron on AliExpress, and it was actually about the same price as the orange one here, but it appears to be better designed. At least the wire comes from the top here, not sure if you can see this. Anyway, let me open it up, and let's see what we got. So by the look of it, you actually get a needle for cleaning the nozzle, which is good. And you also get a spare desoldering tip, as you can see here. This is great, as I'm sure if you use the desoldering iron frequently, the tip will wear out sooner or later. So having a spare tip is definitely welcomed. Now, by the look of it, I think the tip size is actually the same as the one we had here. Let's just take a look here. Yeah, you can see, more or less, these two are very similar. Actually, they're not quite the same as you can see. The tip of this one is actually a little bit smaller than the tip we have here. Now, the opening looks quite comparable as well. Clearly, these are stemmed from similar designs, but you can see that there are some minute differences. And I just zoomed in a little bit. You can see that these two are actually ever so slightly different. And uh, you can see that the desoldering iron here is a little bit longer. And also we have these slots at the bottom, whereas the new one has these holes. But the construction is more or less the same. And you can see that the diameter of the base plate is also a little bit thicker on this new desoldering iron. Let me actually try to remove the desoldering tip from this old iron. And let's see if we can replace that with the tip on this new one. So let's see here. And as it turned out, I actually did not need to remove these screws. As you can see, the tip was simply just twisted on. And this was the original tip here. So let's actually take a look to see if the tip for the new desoldering iron actually fits on this one. I wonder if they're the same diameter here. Yeah, I think they are. Okay, so I was able to twist it in. Let's see if, if it goes all the way down. And you can see that it sort of worked. I was able to screw it on, but there was a little spacing at the bottom here. Not sure if you can see that. And I think the reason is because the original tip, the tube portion is a little bit longer, as you can see, so that the thread probably is deeper here. Anyway, it's good to note that these tips are at least somewhat interchangeable. This desoldering iron actually gives you better feel in your hand compared to the orange one. And you can see here it is rated for 30 watts, which is exactly the same as the one I reviewed before. Now, in my opinion, if they have a slightly higher wattage one with similar price, that would be even better, as 30 watts does seem to be on the low side for a desoldering iron. But for whatever reason, that is the only wattage offered for these cheap desoldering irons. You can see that although they're similar in price, but the design is fundamentally different, we have this carrier at the bottom. Of course, this is made of plastic. Then let's test out the pump. It feels quite solid, actually, and the tension is probably on par with the tension we had on the orange desoldering iron. And because the wire comes out from the top end, holding the iron actually feels a lot more comfortable compared to the other desoldering iron. Now, it only has a two-prong plug, and there's no dedicated ground. Obviously, you're at the mercy of the insulation. And in the event the heating element comes into contact with the case, 
the desoldering iron will become live, and it would pose great danger to you and the circuit you are trying to repair. I have to say though, a lot of cheap soldering irons on the market these days are using this kind of two-pronged plugs. Well, let's at least make sure that the iron is insulated. Ideally, you should use an insulation tester for this purpose, as it generates a high voltage while testing the leakage current, and can ensure the withstand voltage is adequate. Now, of course, we could use a multimeter to test whether either of the pin is connected to the casing here. Using a multimeter can only tell you if the elements are already shorted, but it can give you a false sense of safety if there is an issue with the insulation material itself. As under high voltage, the material could break down if not properly insulated, but with the multimeter, we're not able to test that. Nevertheless, let's give it a go. And here's our continuity test, and you can see that they are not connected to the case. Good. All right, let me plug it in and test it out. And as you can see here, we're actually only drawing 24 watts, not even 30 watts, just like the orange desoldering iron I reviewed before. And that's actually mainly because the nominal voltage here in this region is slightly below 120 volts. Of course, that doesn't help the situation here. And if you remember when I initially plugged in the orange desoldering iron, we could see some smoke coming out and it's not horrible, but this one actually it smells okay and there's no smoke and no noticeable smell. So I don't know what coating they used on the other soldering iron, but this one actually has no problem here. And let's start small and see if we can desolder in this roll of header here. Now this is the same board I used to test the other desoldering iron. Now some people have commented that the metal tip could potentially damage the PCB here when doing desoldering. Now, that is true, but you can't get around it unless you are using a manual pump. But with a manual pump, you can't heat up the joints, so you have other limitations. Anyway, let's give that a go here. And, yep, you can see it's working. Let's keep doing this one. No problem. It actually works quite well. And the suction is actually not that great, just as we observed with the orange one, as you can, you probably can't see right here, but it doesn't quite fully retract. And that's because the desoldering tip is right against the PCB here, and it does require quite a bit of suction. But it is working. And now you can see we have actually removed the solder on pretty much all the joints here. Of course, we still have a little bit. And in order to actually fully remove this, you do have to wiggle it a little bit while heating up the pins individually so that to ensure they are free. But you can see that we are able to remove the solder from all these joints. And now let's actually move on to the board with larger components and thicker traces. And this one still has a few components left. Let's actually start with this capacitor here. Okay, you can see that removed no problem. And now let's remove a few caps. Yeah, no problem. How about this one? Yeah, it works like a treat. And let's now try these connectors here, as they do have larger thermal mass. And we are having some trouble melting the solder here. After you dwell on it for a while, I think it actually works. Okay. 
Yeah, you can see that we removed one of them. And let me actually zoom in a little bit. I'll show you the other one in action here. Yeah, no problem. So overall, this desoldering iron, in my opinion, is actually not bad at all. It is certainly more ergonomic compared to the orange desoldering iron that I reviewed a while back. Price-wise, this one is actually quite comparable to the other iron. And the plus side is you actually get a replacement tip as well. The bottom line here is that it's very cheap and it gets the job done. For just around $6, I could not have asked for more. Anyway, that concludes today's video. I hope you find this video useful. If you liked it, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.